Okay guys, so I'm just going to jump right into this one because I have received several, and by several I mean like four, uh, comments talking about how, well we don't really believe pagan gods are gods, it's just a cool representation of nature. So you just, you don't believe in anything, you're really an atheist. So let's go through this because this guy, he basically puts all their objections in there and I've actually had a very long thread conversation with a different pagan who actually does believe that these are actual entities that she talks to. And I'm not saying I don't believe that, I do. I just don't think that they're the gods that created the universe, right? So let's walk through this one. You say the Bible gave answers no one else had, but I have questions that the Bible has no answer for. One is that if God is all knowing and he gave man both free will and a mind for us to think with, he then gave us rules and tells us not to question him. Nowhere in the Bible does it say not to question God. He actually wants you to ask questions. He tells you to ask questions, to go with him, to, to go to him with your petitions, and to walk with him. So I don't know where you're getting that from. You're wrong. Okay. Also, something to consider: there's more death in the Old Testament than any old pagan myth. Sure, the old gods had lots of sex, and some did kill, but no one ever took these stories literally. Yes, they did. This is how people used to explain the world. This is how people used to explain how things happen. There are many, many people who still do. You don't, which makes you an atheist, not a pagan. So I'm not really sure what, which argument you're trying to have with me here. Number two, in that point, is basically this. What you're saying then is that all gods kill people. It's a universal truth. It's just so universal that even if you didn't have a God, people would come together and have and have a reason to kill other people. It happens now all the time. Even if it's just your laws that say in defense of this society, we will kill you, then there it is. All right. I don't, well, let me just move on from there. Any society, no, no, every society has a reason to kill someone and sometimes we now agree with that and sometimes we don't when it comes to your pagan societies they will kill each other in the name of their gods okay we as christians have one instance of that and it wasn't in the name of god it was in the name of a pope who was a man so not again in the name of god okay where did i leave off let's see in Christianity, we are told that every word of the Bible is true. If this is true, the God of the Bible is like a child who throws a tantrum when he does not get his way. Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, they were warned. They were told to turn their, to change their ways. If you warn someone who's doing something wrong or bad or however it is you want to put it, and they don't do it, what would your response be? Just let them do it? Just continue to hurt each other and other people? That's your response? What would your response be? He had been warning them and he's giving them a final warning in the story that we read. Homosexual is an implied rape. Yes, because the place is evil. You're just giving me a reason. If, especially with the rape, you're just giving me a reason to show why he, he eliminated these people. They're so evil they just want to take people away and rape them in a corner and it's fine, they think it's funny. You don't think those people deserve to die? I do, I think rapists who think it's funny to rape and kill other people or just to rape them and leave them in a corner, I think they should die. You don't apparently. Death to them, yes, death to them. All but Lot and his family, yes, because Lot and his family decided to worship God and not rape people and leave them in a corner. Let's see, tells Joshua at Jericho to kill every man, woman, and child. Yes, this is something that I take on faith that God, as he had in the past before, had given them warning, do not continue down this path. He did it in Sodom and Gomorrah, and the most famous one where he sent someone was uh, Jonah. So God doesn't just kill you just randomly. He gives you warning. He tells you what you've done wrong. He sends people to warn you you have a chance to turn around and do something different. If you don't, that's on you. And it always is, it always has been. When you were growing up and your parents told you not to do something and you got punished for that, whatever their punishment was, 
this is the same thing, only he's dealing with a whole bunch of people who decided that rape, murder, torture, and all these other things are fun things to do on the weekend. But that's not, you can't see that. All you see is God made a judgment and then that's wrong somehow. But your pagan gods can make a judgment, which you don't believe in, by the way, but they can make a judgment and kill people and decide that priests, including everyone, every pagan religion can decide that children need to die because they need that fresh, fresh virgin blood. Come on. The, the, the hypocrisy here is crazy. The Bible is about control and not freedom, at least for me. All right. So I guess it depends on how you define control and freedom. The Bible says to control yourself, to be in control of yourself, and that God will help you do that through the Holy Spirit. So yeah, in that way, it's about control. It's not about freedom. Uh, I just beg to differ completely. Christianity is the backbone of all Western culture. It's why we have the freedoms that we have in America and in Britain. So if you cannot understand that, you cannot see that, you need to take some more history classes. All right. This, these arguments are ridiculous, and it's the only ones that apparently these atheist pagans can come up with. Even, even just regular atheists, this is what they go to. It's ridiculous, guys. Learn your history. Like, not just certain parts, parts and points of it. All of it. Okay, this is ridiculous. Who is worse, a goddess of love like Aphrodite who embodies fleshly beauty? Okay, Aphrodite encourages premarital sex with many, many people. She doesn't even care how you have the sex. Just as long as you're having sex, she encourages sex with animals. She encourages sex with yourself, etc., etc. All of these things that she encourages, all right, lead to disease. So when you say Aphrodite who embodies fleshly beauty, I see Aphrodite who embodies the worst of the sexual diseases that you could get because she doesn't care what you have sex with as long as you have sex. That's who she is. Sorry, I didn't mean to bump the microphone. All right, God who will allow you to burn for eternity because you don't believe in his son died on. Okay, so yes, because right there I have a choice. That's freedom. She's saying, go out there and disease yourself. He's saying, don't do that. Instead, believe on reality, my son that died for you, and change your ways and do sex this way where it's safer or safe really and you have re good relationships and you leave animals alone all right this 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 is a ridiculous argument i think i'll take the hot chick and if i go to hell i will gladly go it's your choice i'm sorry if you go there i am truly sorry i don't believe that that is where you should be spending eternity but if you choose to it's your choice once again you have the freedom to choose to do so the hot chick the hot chick that's riddled with disease. I mean, come on. Look, this kind of thing is the arguments that people give Christians all the time. And at a certain point, Christians are just, it, these these arguments are ridiculous. And it's beginning to just annoy me because you guys think you're just incredibly smart with this. You guys think this is like, oh, this is the, this is the thing that's going to make you think again about being a Christian or you should feel bad about being, I don't feel bad about being a Christian. I have come with all of these things that you just said with answers. And also, I don't know for sure, this could just be YouTube, but I think Ricky Carroll here deleted his message after he gave it to me because I cannot find it under the video anymore. The only reason why I have this is because it gets emailed to me now. I was missing so many that I was like emailed to me. So guys, that's just what I wanted to talk about today. These are ridiculous arguments. They're, I would almost say they're straw men arguments because they don't have a leg to stand on. If you are saying to me that these evil people that existed in these things didn't, should not have died, I'm going to wonder why. These children were taught these evil ways. They're going to grow up to be evil people. That's why they died. I don't know. I just don't understand what people think is really going to do. What, what is this argument really going to do for you? It's not going to do anything. On top of that, it's all emotion. This guy, well, I'll take the hot check. And if I go to hell, I'll gladly go. Bye. If that's really how you feel, you have the freedom to choose that. All right. I just don't understand. 
<laughs> truly, the way that this is laid out in this person's head, I don't. But anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Sorry, it's a little rambly. That's why I'm going to put this under the night rambles, just because it's a response video and it's not really too much of a subject per se. But this, these, these arguments are ridiculous. You need to come at me with some better ones, all right? Or maybe, better yet, read the responses I've already have down at the bottom of the video so you can come better prepared. All right, guys, have a great day. Remember to pray and read your Bible, and I will see you in the next one.